Well, the operators of the Colonial Pipeline uh, decided to pay nearly four and a half million dollars back in May in order to resume control over its pipeline. That pipeline supplies nearly half the fuel consumed on the East Coast. Now, U.S. officials say they've been able to recover about half of that money, which was paid via cryptocurrency by tracking the receiver's digital wallet. Now, experts in central banks have long warned that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are risky in part because of their potential to be used in financial crimes like this one. The U.S. says the Colonial Pipeline was hacked by a criminal group called Darkside, which has links to Russia, although Moscow denies any knowledge of it. Prosecutors say this is the man who shocked America, heartlessly shooting little Aiden Leos dead in a road rage incident. 24-year-old Marcus Anthony Ariz and his girlfriend, 23-year-old Wynn Lee, are being held on $1 million bail. Aiden's mom was driving the six-year-old to kindergarten when he was shot in his car seat last month. The pair were arrested here at this apartment complex in Costa Mesa, California, about 14 miles from the site of the shooting. We're told police had the pair under surveillance at a local sushi restaurant, but it was deemed too dangerous to arrest them there. So they waited for them to return home and then closed in. All right, that's fun. There are several videos showing Marcus Ariz firing an assault rifle and other high-powered weapons posted on his Instagram page. At least 17 people have been killed in an explosion near a patrol station in the Yemeni city of Marib. A ballistic missile struck a gas station, setting cars on fire when drivers were refueling them. Dozens of people have been injured in the incident, including five children. The patrol station is located about a kilometer from the military base. Houthis have acknowledged the military base was on their target. Houthis political commander tweeted calling for an independent investigation into the incident. He also promised to pay compensation if the group was found responsible. Now, the Saudi-backed government blames Houthi forces for the attack. Yemen's information minister has said that the attack amounts to a war crime. Houthi rebels have been attempting to capture Marib since February, and it is currently controlled by the internationally recognized government. A Canadian family in London, Ontario, was killed in an anti-Muslim hate crime, according to police on Monday. Witnesses say suspected attacker, 20-year-old Nathaniel Veltman, struck five members of the family with his black pickup truck on Sunday and sped off. The London Free Press reported that among those killed were a 15-year-old girl, both of her parents and her grandmother. Her nine-year-old brother is in the hospital with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Veltman was later arrested in a mall parking lot, wearing a body armor-type vest, according to police. He is due in court on Thursday to face four counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted murder. Meanwhile, police are weighing filing terrorism charges against him. While the former president of Mali is held under house arrest, junta leader Asimi Goita, in full military regalia, is sworn in as Mali's new head of state in what critics call another bloodless coup. Outside the venue, special forces secure the area. The mood at the ceremony is somber and tense. There are no heads of state and few ambassadors. 
and some members of civil society shunned the ceremony, calling it a sham and illegitimate. In Goita's first public address since last month's coup, he sought to unite Malians and tell the world presidential elections will be held. A five-metre fibreglass half-cabin reduced to this, a 30-tonne humpback whale landing on the boat. 18-year-old Nick Myhill took the hit, fishing with his stepdad Matt. Nick and Matt were doing about 30 kilometres an hour early Sunday morning when the whale slammed down off Naruma. Nick suffered critical head injuries. Matt escaped with cuts and abrasion. Matt used his radio to make a mayday call. An ambulance met the pair at the boat ramp. 